Hello, I'm Rick Stivers. I'd like to welcome you to Young Martin's Reels. Today's project is going to be this pin 716Z. And now I'll be perfectly honest with you. When uh, Ken told me that he found a pin 716Z, I didn't understand at the time the direction that the numbers went on the uh, pins. And I thought he was going to be re bringing me this big reel because I have a 710Z that I'm planning to do. And uh, I assumed that if a 710 was one size, the 716 should be bigger than that. Uh, nope, they're going the opposite directions. So 716 is much smaller. This is a um, ultralight reel. It is a uh, pen 716 ultralight. And when Ken brought this to me, the... Oh, by the way, I hope this isn't too distracting. We're going to try this and see how it works. This is to help me see if I can keep things centered on the frame of the camera. Um, so hopefully you guys won't find that too distracting. Most of the time, it will be covered up by whatever it is I'm working on. And every time I see it, I will know that, hey, I'm off center and I need to put my uh, work back over here. Okay, so when Kim brought this reel to me, this is the drag knob that was on it. It was broken in half and it's got a steel uh, threaded insert that was inside it and the drag wouldn't work on this reel at all. Uh, so I went through my box and I found a drag knob that was similar in shape to what was there. Now this drag knob did not have, it was just a plain plastic drag knob uh, with plastic threads. And what I did is I took and I drilled out uh, the, to the next size under what the insert was for the old knob. And I ground off the ends of these. I'm still going to polish these off a little bit. They're still a little on the rough side. I just put them on my grinder for the moment just to get them in, into the uh, shape that they needed to be. And uh, I ground this down. Now, why didn't I just go buy another knob? Well, turns out you can't get one for this reel anymore. And um, so I uh, got this one, modified it so that it would fit. And it does a really nice job. It works as it's supposed to. Um, the original, though, if you look, was solid flat on the bottom, which means it could have put pressure on this center and this outside ring all at the same time, whereas this one puts the pressure all on the outside ring. Um, but it is an ultralight reel, so it doesn't need all that much pressure to begin with. Uh, so, And it does work. Um, you can tighten it down reasonably well. And we're back in operation. But you can't get this... Uh, drag knob. I went looking on eBay for it and there was one that sold about three months ago and it sold for, I think it was $32 for that drag knob. So um, you can't get them from uh, anywhere that I was able to find. That's why I made one to go on here to get this reel back up and running. So we're going to remove the drag knob. We're All right, we're going to remove the drag. We're going to remove the um, pressure plate. We're going to take off the rotor, I'm sorry, the spool, set that over the side, and that's going to bring us to here. And we are now going to remove the handle. Okay, we've got the handle removed. And at this point, I think we're going to remove the one and only screw on the side plate. That makes it pretty simple. There's the screw out. I have a feeling. Let me take a look at that. Now, I would have thought that that screw would have had a keeper on it, but it doesn't look like it's got a groove for a keeper. Let's go ahead now and remove the side plate. Now, the paint is a little rashed out on this reel. The reel works pretty well. It's just a little uh, slu sluggish, and that's because of this old grease that's in it. So, we've got the side cover off. I'm going to come back now and we're going to remove this screw right here that is holding the axle shaft in to this cross wind arm. Okay, there's the screw. Now we should be able to slide the axle shaft out. There we go. Axle shaft is removed. With that removed, we can now get to the nut here on the rotor. A 
let's try this 10 millimeter see if that fits and it does Should be able to slide the rotor up and off. We've got two screws here holding the bearing retainer. Take the bearing retainer, slide it over there to the side. And now we should be, oh, wait a minute, what is this? What do we have here? Well, I was not paying attention to that. Didn't know it was going to fall out. How does that go in? Okay, that's our bail trip. It looks like about the only way it can go in. That's definitely not it. I think. Like that. That seems to be the way it goes in. Let's test it. nut down, trip the bail, bring it around, and it's not tripping. Maybe I don't have it tight, but I thought I had it tight enough. Oh, I hold it down in there. There we go. Okay, so that is correct. All right, let's go ahead and remove that nut again, and <laughs> we'll have to pay attention to that when we put it back. Okay, there's the nut. I'll set that over here. Set the <clears throat> rotor over here. We're going to take this rotor all the way apart. There's the locking plate for that. There is our worm gear for a pinion. And the bearing. That bearing feels okay. Okay. We definitely got to do some work on this rotor. All right. Now, let's flip the anti-reverse so that it is not engaged like that. I believe that's the case. Let's turn it this way. Okay. Can we reverse it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's disengage the anti-reverse like this, and we should be able to push this up and out. This is one dirty little reel. All right, now let's get a really good look at how the anti-reverse is installed in case this spring or something pops loose while we're cleaning it. Okay, this spring here, it, the easy one to see is this one. It's in this corner over here, and then it comes up through from the bottom up into here. Let's see if we can see the other side of this. Okay. This one comes down, wraps around here, and is hooked right here, and that pushes right there against it. Okay, when we flip this the other way, that pushes it back and out up against that spring and holds it out against away from the gear. Okay, this is ready to be cleaned. All right, let's say, for instance, we want to take this apart, which I do. I always want to take things apart. And if this is anything like the Shakespeare's, this is going to be a reverse threaded screw. Let's find out. Nope, it's a regular threaded screw. Okay, screw comes out. Very 
well. I moved the arm. Is there a washer? Yes. Actually, it's a sleeved washer. There we go. I'll set that over there with that arm. Now we've got our main gear. And these pieces are going to sit over here to be scrubbed up and be ready to go back together. Boy, they are really sticky. That's why this reel is so slow. All right. We're not going to take this any further apart, even though I love to take things apart. There's no reason to take this apart. Okay. We will flip it over just to look. Yeah, you could take this screw out right here and then take this eccentric out, which would allow you to remove this spring. If you had a broken spring, you could do that. But I think you can see it well enough to see about putting it back. And you could remove this screw for this anti-reverse claw. And that's easy enough to see how that would go. There's no reason for me to take those out. All right. I looked at that. We're going to set it over to the side with those. Set all of this to the side. And we've got one piece. Well, let's go ahead and finish taking this pull apart. Okay. And it's no, nothing more than a Teflon washer and a steel washer sitting in there together. So we'll clean that up and put it back together. The next thing is going to be this rotor. And the rotor is very sticky. And I'm going to show you right now. Probably the only thing that would really be required on this is to spray it down with some good lubricant to loosen it up. Maneuver it back and forth a bit. Let's see where the trip for it is. It's over here. Okay. And already we have it working. Now, if it was me and I was just doing this for my own usage, what I would probably do at this point is I would go ahead, spray some more WD-40 in there and take this over on my air compressor and blow compressed air through it, spray it a few more times, blow it some more and get all that out of there. But I know that there's going to be somebody out there who's taking one of these apart and want to know how to put it back together. Well, if I don't show you, then you'll be asking me later when I don't have the reel anymore how to do it, and I won't be able to show you. So I'm going to go ahead and show you now. We're going to start off. Let's see which side of this is going to be spring-loaded. It appears it's going to be this side over here. So let's start off by removing this nut on our bail spring, our bail wire. Yep, quarter-inch drive. So let's remove the nut. Slide the bail wire out. Wow, it's really tight. It's just a really strong bail wire. Okay, we're going to put the nut back on. There's not a washer. No locking washer. Okay. So let's see if this will slide out. Some of these bail wires will slide out if you rotate them. This one will not, so that's good. We're going to leave it there. Okay, now if you look, this can easily now move without a spring. So we know that this side is not spring-loaded. Let's go ahead now and remove the screw and see how all this goes together. Yep, nothing on this side except it goes together with a screw. All right. And let's see how gummed up that mechanism is right there. Okay, it is spring-loaded in there, and that doesn't look like a spring I want to mess with. So I think I'm going to leave that one in. But it is dirty, and we'll have to scrub it. All right, let's go to this side, and this side is also spring-loaded. It's got a bump stop here. If your bail wire is going down too far, you might want to look and see if you have that plastic bail bump stop because it may be missing. All right, let's go ahead at this point and get a bigger screwdriver on this screw. There we go. And I can feel it pushing out. This is a... Okay, now let's bring it up. Let the tension come off of it and then take the screw out the rest of the way. OK, 
Okay, there's our spring wire. That's a pretty heavy, heavy little spring wire. See how much dirt is in there? But most of that could have been blown out. Okay, so we're gonna clean this up good, scrub this whole rotor, and have this thing back together, or ready to go back together. So I'm gonna pause at this point. I'm gonna go clean all these parts up. We're gonna reassemble it. I'm back now, the parts are clean and we're ready to start assembly. We're gonna start off with this bail wire. Um, and all we're gonna do is just lubricate it and just kind of slightly assemble it because we're not gonna put it onto uh, the arm yet. We're just gonna put a little grease on it. Slip the roller out, it's all been cleaned real well now. Slip the roller on, make sure it spins okay. And set the nut on, give it a little twist and that's it for the moment. Okay, let's come back over here now to the rotor and let's see about getting it back together the way it belongs. First part we're gonna have to try to do is put this arm back on. Okay, and the arm is on this side over here. And remember, it's, gonna, it's got this drop that comes down and hits on that uh, bumper right there. So we've gotta put this in with this spring. And the spring has got two tag ends. One sticks out, one sticks up. So we're going to take the part that sticks out over here and put it in this little slot that you see right here. Put that in there. We're going to come over and take this other one and we're going to slide it into this hole. That when it goes up, it goes into this little hole on this arm. Like that. Okay. Now we put all this together, we're going to want to rotate this this direction. And we can't do that yet until we start getting the sprint those screw back in. All right, you've got a thin arm and a thick arm. This arm over here is a thick arm. So what we're going to do is we're going to look on these two screws and find out which one has the short shoulder and which one has the long shoulder. Okay, the one with the long shoulder like this, that's going to go on the other side and the short shoulder is going to go on this side. So we're going to put this in and we're just going to get it started. Like so. Once we get it started, we just want to rotate this around until that bumper gets past, or the arm gets past the bumper. And then we're going to want to screw it in. And it's going to want to catch on the shoulder. Just maneuver it around until it releases and screw it on in. If you've got it correct and the spring is not trapped, you will have that right there. This is what we have. We're going to add oil to the inside edge, oil to the outside edge, and we're going to come over here with the hole where we put that tag in and put a little oil in there for the spring. Now we'll lubricate that spring. Let's go to the other side where the trip arm is, and let's see about getting that put back on. And let's see, this is going to go into the arm. If you look at the arm, I'm going to blow this out just a little bit right there. Okay. If you look at this arm, the arm's going to trip back like this. So the arm, this has got to go this direction right here. And we look at this, and when this is in the up position, it's going to lock. So we have to look at where that's going to be, and it's right there. Perfect. So that's the direction we want this to be in. So bring it down like this. And we're going to put that screw in. The one with the deep shoulder. Get the screw started before you worry about where this trip is. Okay. Go ahead now. Screw it down some more. And now the trip is trapped underneath it. See, we can't have that. So we've got to get the trip out. Too far in. Unscrew a little more. See if we can get that trip released. There we go. See the trip has to be on top of it here, like this. Okay. Here's your trip. Release it. Good. And we're gonna come back to this side. We're going to loosen up this nut here, take this nut off again. I'm going to 
slip it into the hole. Like so. And it's got a little bit of tension on it. Let's see here. Now, when it's sitting proper, though, it, it actually is okay once it's where it belongs. I'm going to bring it in just a little bit. Oh, that was a little more than just a little bit. Okay. Now, line that up. Get the trip. Okay, and let's put the nut on. down, put some oil, now before we put the oil, let's see if it's going to trip properly, there we go, and it does, let's go ahead and oil this side now, and we're going to set the rotor over to the side, let's come back now to this body and start seeing about putting it back together. We're going to start off with your pinion gear. And this took me a while to clean this thing. It had some really, really old caked in grease down in the grooves on this uh, worm gear. And it did not like uh, to come out. But I did manage to get it out. The bearing is fine. I've cleaned it. I've soaked it. I've blown it out with the compressed air. And then I came back and oiled it. It's a shielded bearing. It's not a sealed bearing. We're going to go ahead and oil it one more time. Make sure it's got plenty of oil in it. And it does. Let's go ahead at that point and slide it in. Tell you what, just to make some people happy, let's go ahead and grease the worm gear. And there's a hair on it. There we go. Get rid of that. Okay. We'll grease the worm gear. Like so. And we'll slide it in to the case. Like that. The next piece that's going to go on is going to be this piece, but before it can go, we've got to get this piece reinstalled. Okay. And it's going to go in like that. Okay. With that installed, we can now put this bearing retainer and trip mechanism retainer back on and put the screws back in. With that done, I believe we're ready to set the rotor back in place. So let's set the rotor on. Then we're going to put in this locking plate. If you look at the pinion gear, it's got flat sides on it. Okay, and this keyway on this is going to lock into those. So we're going to put the pinion on, put the locking plate on to where the flats are, like that. And then we're going to rotate the uh, rotor until that drops down in there, which it did. And then put the rotor locking nut on, tighten it down. And if we've done this correctly, we flip this over when we trip this band. There we go. going to bring us to the main gear getting it back in we'll go ahead put a little grease on the back side of it here but mostly we want to grease the teeth once we've done that we can slide it in And then we're ready to put this assembly back on, which is our crosswind block and crosswind arm. I'll set that in place. This arm is then going to fit 
down over top of this posted sleeve like that and then this screw goes in to that hole in the main gear. Make sure that shoulder goes down inside that sleeve. Snug it up. Now, come back and grease the face of the main gear where this arm rides so that when it spins it's got some lubrication and so like this there we go keep this over this direction and it's time to put in the axle shaft I'm going to oil the axle shaft get everything back over here on our tag As we slide this in, we're going to rotate it slightly just to spread that oil. Now, as it gets over here to the arm, we've got to get it to fit in and over. Line that hole up. There we go. There's got the holes lined up. And now it's ready this screw back in. And let's make sure this is lined up. Okay. Set the screw in. down very nice okay let's go ahead and tighten down or install the handle hold the spool while you tighten it there we go put the bail there we go perfect couldn't ask for anything more there. Let's have it take the anti reverse. It's working. You can see it down below. Let's put the side cover back on. If this was my reel, I think this would be a prime candidate for a repaint. Uh, it's a nice reel, very functional. It just needs some paint uh, to protect it a little bit. Okay, we've got that done. We'll set the body over to the side, and we're going to come back to our spool now. And I've cleaned the bottom side of the spool and get that line, extra, excess line off. If you need to take this off, you can take this screw out to remove this spring. Make sure that this spring is down here where it's going to impact on the clicker and the clicker I'm talking about is this one right here right there make sure that it's bent and in the right position straight down flip it over we're going to put in the Teflon washer we're going to put in the steel washer that's keyed then we're going to put in our tension washer we're going to set all that back on the reel and these keyed washers have got to line up with the key on there and I polished this up a little bit cleaned it up make it look more a little more presentable to the way it should be and uh, we're gonna go ahead and tighten down oops drag knob I can barely turn that. So, fully adjustable drag. Let's actually see what it feels like with line on it. Of course, the line's a little 
Mine's kind of rotted, but I'll be, I'll be stripping that off. It's going to go out with uh, no line on it whatsoever. So whoever ends up with this reel will have to reline it. Okay, trip the bale. And let's see how the drag feels. That's nice. Tighten it down some more. Okay. Loosen it up some. All right. So there you have the pin ultralight 716Z spinning reel. And uh, I hope you like the video and the kind of cobbled together repair that I did on this. And um, if you did, please hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. Tell me what you didn't like about it. Uh, I think Tyler likes these reels. I think that's what you told me, Tyler, is that you like these reels. It's the first one I've had my hands on. And uh, it was kind of rough. It took almost an hour just to clean the old grease out of it. it. This stuff was caked in there so bad and so hard. And uh, it took another hour to make this knob for it. So uh, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please, if you want to see more like it and haven't done so before, hit the subscribe button. And for now, that's Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels, signing out.